Yo, yo, what is up, guys? It's Cone back here again today with another video. Uh, before I get into anything, I want to thank you guys so much for the support on the channel recently. It's been absolutely insane. Uh, if you're new, consider subscribing. It's pretty easy. All you have to do is click the button right th down there. It really, really helps me out. I drop videos about basketball and the NBA pretty much daily. Sometimes there's a day here and there where there isn't anything, but then there's other times where there are twice a day. So, you know, it really evens out. Uh, also, consider leaving a like. It helps me out a lot as well. Even if you aren't new, drop that like, drop a subscribe, uh, leave a comment below, and yeah. So, uh, today's video is going to be about a little bit of a different topic. Typically, I am recapping the NBA games that happened in the day prior. I'm talking about players. I'm take, talking about teams. But for this, I want to talk about kind of something that's transpired over the course of the whole season and just kind of a general thing, which is coaches in the context of tanking. Um, so particularly, I want to focus on Steven Silas and the Houston Rockets, who are in a very unique position, uh, especially Silas, who uh, kind of came into the situation expecting one thing and being given the complete opposite. But before I talk about any of that, I want to get into some backstory. Now, Silas was hired in October of 2020 by the Houston Rockets after Mike D'Antoni parted ways with the franchise prior to joining Steve Nash as an assistant coach on the Brooklyn Nets. Shout out to them. Brooklyn Nets playing really, really well. Uh, shout out to D'Antoni deciding to team up with Steve Nash, help him out right there. Uh, but it was just time for him and the Houston Rockets to kind of part ways. They had been together for a long time. Uh, it sounds like I'm talking about a relationship breakup here, but they had been together a while and they just couldn't get over the hump. It was a clear time to move on especially because this came shortly after longtime general manager Daryl Morey, a super integral part to building these Houston Rocket teams that nearly took down that super powerful juggernaut Golden State Warriors team a couple seasons ago. He ended up stepping down before becoming the 76ers executive. He's done a great job over there, helped them return to contention after kind of a disappointing season last year. First right now in the Eastern Conference ahead of that Brooklyn Nets team, playing really, really well. So he's done a great job over there. And he did a great job in Houston for a long time. It was just once again time to move in a different direction. And it was clear that the Rockets were going to go through some renovations. However, at this point, there was no indication of all the chaos that was about to approach Houston. When Silas talked about getting the Houston job, he talked a lot about his excitement with an opportunity to coach a team with two incredible players in Russell Westbrook and James Harden. That's what he thought he was going to get into. He had finally gotten his big break after years of being an assistant coach. He was an assistant coach for so long, most recently in Dallas under Rick Carlisle, and he made it. He had finally become an NBA coach, and not just that. He was going to be the NBA coach that was hopefully going to return Houston to the promised land. He was going to help them get over the hump, right? The problem is a month later, James Harden rumors began circulating about the longtime franchise superstar wanting a trade out of Houston. And in early December, Russell Westbrook is then traded to Washington for John Wall. Now, none of these James Harden rumors are concrete, but the Russell Westbrook trade very much so. Uh, this is now one of the superstars that Silas thought he was going to be coaching gone. And when they traded Russell Westbrook, that was an indicator that things were not at all going to go the way that people thought this season. They did bring in Christian Wood as well in free agency, uh, DeMarcus Cousins. So people thought that this team might have an opportunity to try and be competitive. They still had P.J. Tucker. They still had Eric Gore and they still had Daniel House. They still had solid pieces. They did end up dealing Robert Covington to the Trailblazers, which a lot of people, including myself, thought, uh, I don't know if this team's going to try and compete if they're doing that. So there was a lot of mixed signals here. But at this point, nothing was concrete about the James Harden rumors. It was just a lot of speculation, a lot of posting on Instagram, Snapchat story type stuff. I think James Harden put like a like a emoji on his Instagram story that a lot of people were like, what the hell does that mean? Uh, there was like the whole thing where he had like a cap on and off the bottle. There was just a lot of drama. And things continued to get worse because James Harden then did not attend training camp. He was seen partying. Uh, Silas, in, when asked in pre press conferences, just says he doesn't know much. Uh, I don't know what else he is supposed to say. Because now he has lost one franchise player. And the second one will not show up to his training camp. So he's dealing with a lot already in his first like month, two months as their head coach. Leagues then start to come out about how Harden's antics are rubbing his teammates the wrong way. He finally ends up reporting to training camp. But ultimately, he acts up again because he goes to an event prior to the season opener against the Thunder, which inevitably re results in the postponement of their game against the Thunder to open the season. So, first game of the season, first game that Steven Silas was supposed to coach, didn't get to coach it. It just didn't happen. Um, Harden ended up having some incredible games. He had a great game against the Trailblazers with over 40 points in their first game that they actually got to play during the season. But he spent so much time looking uninterested on the court, and eventually he publicly complained in a post-game interview saying that the team didn't have enough talent and that he wanted out, leading to him being dealt to the Nets in mid-January for a return of Victor Oladipo and about every draft pick imaginable from the Nets. Both superstars that Steven Silas was excited to coach are gone within a month of the season starting. Westbrook, gone in December. James Harden, gone in January. So, 
both are gone now. What do you do? Uh, you try and just keep pushing on if you're Steven Silas. You're like, okay, this is not at all what I expected, but we can, we can make things happen, right? And they kind of did for a little bit. Uh, they showed promise to continue the season. They pushed to an 11-10 and record after a 115-103 win over the Memphis Grizzlies on February 4th, which made them 7-1 in their last eight games at that point. Uh, Wall and Oladipo aren't quite the same players that they used to be, but they're playing well enough at this point. They're doing enough to win games, and that's what matters. Steven Silas right now is just trying to win games. You have some veterans on the roster, so he's not looking to lose. Christian Wood also looks like an emerging star. He still does, but he's been dealing with injuries and stuff. But at this point, oh my god, Christian Wood was <laughs> going crazy. At this point, he is the most improved player leader, looking exactly as advertised before they signed him to a big deal in the offseason. And with all that... Things are going surprisingly well post-Harden in Houston, a lot better than a lot of people expected, including me. So now we flash forward to today, and the date right now, as I'm recording this video and as you're seeing it, is March 22nd. The Rockets have not won since that February 4th game, and it is March 22nd. We are nearly two months later, and they have not won a game. They're on, an, on a historically bad 20-game losing streak. I did not mess up there that is 20 games straight that they've lost christians wood injury prior to the losing streak was a big reason as to why they've lost so much but even with christian wood back yesterday against a super heavily depleted thunder team the only guy we were starting in our starting lineup that typically is there was luguin's door no shea no horford none of that no basley uh and with just that thunder beat him the rockets lost and that extended the losing streak to the uh very disappointing 20th game straight after the game, Steven Silas begins his press conference with his head in his hands. He looks super defeated, right? I think you've all probably seen the picture. It took him a while to answer questions, too. But someone asked a question, and he just did not answer for a little bit, just kept his head in his hands. He looked super di disappointed and super dejected. The man who once believed he was coming to a contender to try and finally help Houston get over that hump in the Harden era is now in the history books forever with one of the worst stretches of basketball that we've ever seen in the NBA. 20 game losing streaks don't happen often. There's been very few of them in NBA history, and this is one of them. And the crazy thing about all of this is, not many people care. People really aren't too mad about the losing. The fans nor the front office see this new era Rockets team as a contender right now, and the Rockets ultimately are fighting to keep their first round pick in a loaded draft class. And to do so, their pick has to be in the top four. It's top four protected this year. If it's outside of the top four, it's headed to Oklahoma City. So theoretically, losing is, exa is exactly what the Rockets want. But if you look at Steven Silas, if you look at the way he acted yesterday post-game, it's very clear he's not here to tank. It's very clear that that is not why he's here. Steven Silas spent years grinding as an assistant coach, looking for this exact opportunity. The opportunity to be the head coach of an NBA team, his dream job. And it's going the exact opposite of how he envisioned it. He is forever in the history books going to be known as the coach that coached this team to 20 straight losses. If this level of failure continues, even if it is beneficial to the Rockets long term, his reputation as a head coach is going to continue to take hits. If they end up losing like 30 straight and setting that record, can you imagine the reputation he's going to have for the rest of his coaching career? He's never going to shake that. And years down the line, few people are going to remember that Christian Wood was injured during this stretch. Few people are going to remember that Eric Gordon is out 46 weeks, that John Wall missed some time during the stretch, that Oladipo is not the player he once was. He's been very inefficient. And if Silas ends up getting fired by this Rockets team down the line, a front office might look at this tumultuous season from him and the Houston Rockets, especially this stretch right now, when they're considering Silas as their new head coach. And for that reason, they might go, we're going to go in a different direction. And he's done. You don't get a lot of coaches to be a head a lot of chances to be a head coach in this league. If you fail, it's very tough to get back up. And this is kind of the dark side of tanking that people really don't talk about. Fans root for tanking so that they can see their favorite teams win a championship, which is the ultimate goal. So do front offices. They root for the tanking or they make their teams not good enough to win so that they can tank and inevitably win a championship if you get a star player in the draft. It's the nature of things. But the, the thing is, both of these groups of people will probably still be around when the tanking finally pays off. The fans are going to stick with their team if they're loyal fans, and the front office is the team that's orchestrating all of this, so they will most likely be there at the time that the team returns to relevance and maybe wins that championship. But the coaches, it's very often that they're not still there. Now, this doesn't mean that coaches are absolved of all of the fault for the failures of their teams during this period. There's a lot of coaches that just aren't quite fit for their teams, 
but a lot of times these coaches are thrown into impossible situations where they're expected to try and win games with suboptimal rosters and use as scapegoats when things go wrong. And so if they don't tank, fans give them a hard time because they're trying to lose, but if they do tank, they take a hit as a coach in their reputation. Now, sometimes you do just need to move on from a coach as you approach a new era. For the Warriors, moving on from Mark Jackson to Steve Kerr might have been a key reason as to why they won the title in 2015. Now, I don't think Kerr is an incredible coach, but sometimes you have to make that change. For the Sixers, Brett Brown stuck through a lot of tanking, but ultimately he failed to get over the hump when the tanking ended and the push for contention began. They brought in Doc Rivers, and now they're the one seed in the East. However, it's very rare that a coach comes into a situation expecting contention like Silas did and was then given a very subpar roster in his first season. That's a lot to put on a coach. Most coaches that end up as the leader of a failing squad know what they're getting into. But Silas had no idea. And now he's out there. His team is not performing. They're losing game after game after game with veterans on the roster. This isn't not like it's a young team they're even developing or building anything. They're just oh, the only reason they're playing right now is to try and get that pick. And they're playing terribly. Now, I don't think Silas is a bad coach. There have been so many people that have talked positively about Steven Silas, and it's his first season. He's in an impossible situation, a tough one. He's a minority coach that fought for years to break through barriers in order to secure his assistant coaching job as well as this position. And he was given a situation that, the, that is the exact opposite of what he expected. Can you imagine that you have worked all your life to become a head coach, and you are like, okay, I'm pushing for a title in my first season. And now your team sucks. You've lost 20 games in a row. And he is pissed off. He's sad. He looked dejected. It's understandable. His job is to win games. People talk about tanking and like, oh, why isn't this team losing that many games? Players and coaches are never going to try and tank. I'm not accusing the Rockets players of playing bad and trying to get Silas fired or trying to get that draft pick or anything. They're just not a very good team. And Silas will probably end up being the scapegoat. I've seen a lot of people really get on him. Now, I don't think he's been great in his first season, but he's in an impossible situation right now. It's the exact opposite of what he game planned for coming into this year. And this has happened during the season. It's not even like he had a whole offseason to prepare or that he was hired in October. All this happened in September, November type stuff. And then ultimately he was able to get a chance to kind of revise his plan for this upcoming season. Westbrook was traded like 20 days before the season started, maybe even less. James Harden was traded in the season. And he's stuck. It's tough. And I hate it because I think he's a great guy. And from, like I said, a lot of people talk good about him. A lot of people in the league, Luka loved him. Mavericks fans loved him. Brick Carla, who I think is an incredible coach, loved him. And so I think there was something there. And my hope is just that if Houston does manage to return to relevance soon, that Steven Silas is not fired in favor of someone else, prior to that return and that he's given an opportunity to prove what he's capable of before Houston cuts ties with him. That's all I'm hoping. But for now, I guess we'll just have to see if they can get a win. Um, tonight, they have another chance against the Raptors who are really struggling. We'll see if they're able to pull it off or if the losing streak extends to 21, which is then getting very close to the league record, which is not what you want to see. So I just want to make a video about this. Let me know what you think about this situation. Let me know what you think about tanking coaches in relation to tanking. I think it's an interesting conversation to be had and something that we don't really think about or talk about as NBA fans. Yeah. So with that being said, I will see you guys later. Everyone say it back.